Do you want to see what the largest sports card inventory on earth looks like? I'm here with Rob, the owner of Burbank Sports Cards. He's going to give us an inside tour right now. Let's go. All right, Rob, so my first impression walking in here is this, this almost looks more like a card show than what you would typically see at a card shop. There's just an endless sea of cases. You've got an unbelievable selection of wax. This is crazy. Yeah, it's just the um, culmination of 33 years of owning a shop and listening to our customers. Yeah. And um, we feel like we've built a card show experience, but more importantly, just a vibe, a sense of community, some place where people can meet up and enjoy yeah. the hobby. And there's a lot of activity in here already, even though it's early in the day, right? On, yeah. a, on a weekday, On a weekday, yeah. It's, we get people four or five times a week because they know that we're gonna be fresh in this place. And uh, we just grind it every day. And thankfully, we really enjoy what we do and hopefully it shows. Yeah, for sure. So right here, we got, it looks like we got a lot of wax, different, here we got lower price boxes, sure. a lot of affordable stuff, mm -hmm. nice stuff that kids could grab. It's important when a first time customer comes in that they're seeing price points that they can actually afford and then they can work their way into higher products. Right. But this is, we're the gateway into the category, so it's incredibly important to have affordable product on the shelves. And then lots of singles, it looks like, organized by player. So let's say, all right, so so you got you got some legend. Let's take one of the LA legends here, right? So it looks like Magic Johnson. We've got just, we got box after box <laughs> of just all kinds of Magic Johnson cards starting at a dollar. So basically everything from, from modern to old cards and everywhere in between, these are all, it looks like real affordable ones. Someone who's trying to complete a collection or that type of thing, this is a good place for them to start. So a kid who is looking to do a flip, a kid who's looking to, you know, get on a card and maybe, maybe flip it for a few times what they paid for it, they could come in here, they could go through your dollar box right. of Ronald Acuna Jr. cards. This guy's hot right now. You'll be able to buy anywhere from six to 800 Acuna cards at a buck a piece when we're done. And I bet some of these cards, they can then probably go turn around and resell if a guy gets hot like that for sure. probably five bucks or There's something. There's Easter and... eggs throughout sure. these boxes. Sure. We price them once, they're in there. It can't just be high-end yeah. breaking and all it makes that. It, it, it makes it an experience, an experience that's open and available to everybody. Agreed. That's awesome, yeah. that's awesome. But then on the flip side over here, you got some cases, lots of cases, like <laughs> beautiful card show-like displays, multi-tier cases with some really big cards in them. I mean, I'm seeing cards that are, you know, uh, hundreds, thousands, even in some cases, tens of thousands of dollars all here on display. But when you have cards like this, people can come in and get store credit. You'll get a cash offer, but you'll get 10% more in store credit more people take the store credit actually than the cash Interesting. because it's a candy store here and they can turn into something else. Maybe they have a box of 20 cards. They want to put that in a one card. We have that ability and by having this selection, we get people all day long that sell us cards because they can trade into something that they can normally not afford to pay cash for. See, that's really interesting. So a lot of sports card shops, they're enthusiastic about selling, but they're not as enthusiastic about buying or trading. They, they right. kind of want you to come in and, mm -hmm. and, and, and buy stuff from them, yes. not, not sell them stuff, right? Sure. But it seems like you guys are the opposite. Like Polar you, opposite. Interesting. Well, the thing is, we're in a collectibles market. It's a two-way market. And we're not selling microwave ovens, we're selling collectibles. And I personally think it's a really bad look on the industry in general, where everybody's just looking to push, looking to break, looking to sell product and not buy it back. And I think that is why so many people love coming to this place, is we'll take triple shoes of just whatever, put a number to it so people can get back into it. And I think companies like Fanatics, Tops, whoever, Panini, they need to recognize the value in that, and that hobby shops provide that. And everything goes to breakers for some reason, and all they're doing is pushing things. You need to be able to get product into places where people buy it back. People just can't get their credit card ding, 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 ding all the time. They need to be able to take what they have and turn it into something else. Yeah. And that's something I think we're kind of unique, and that's how we build the inventory that we built. So this case caught my eye because while you've got so much, you know, brand new modern wax as you would expect to see, there's some old, high-end, awesome stuff along here. Cases from previous years, some real big cases and real big uh, boxes of cards. Yeah, it's when you have a reputation for buying damn near anything, 
you get damn near anything over the counter. And we see some pretty cool stuff that comes through. Where, like, where did that come from? Literally, that came in yesterday. McDavid SP Authentic Rookie Box literally Ooh, just came in. Nice. And we're like, whoa. I mean, yeah, not, you don't see that every day. I mean, no. that's a hard box to find. And when it comes in, you don't want it leaving. Right. And so you have to be competitive when you're uh -huh. buying these things. Awesome. That's incredible. Well, you got a new room. It looks like you just built out back here. Can we go take a look at that? This literally didn't exist last week. Okay. We call it kind of the fishbowl because you're walking into a, gl a glass room. What you saw on the other wall, and we'll go back over that, it's all baseball, basketball, and football uh -huh. on that wall. We are able to pull all the other sports into this room cleanly. The one thing I'm super excited about though, and our big summertime project is vintage. Okay. Um, vintage is hard. That's why yeah. you walk into shops and you don't see much of it. Right. Because it's subjective, it's difficult, you don't see it every day, and not all your clientele is looking for it. But by the same token, to me it's the foundation of the hobby, and I think it's only gonna grow in the coming years. People still build sets. People still look to complete teams and PC and just love going through cards because they're like pieces of art. I built the store, Jeff, the way I'd want to walk into a store. What do I want to see? Well, I'm on this side of the counter now. What do I expect from that side yeah. of the counter? And yeah. um, I got expectations. I want to be able to collect vintage. I want to be able to collect by player. I want to see the best stuff in the hobby. I want a great selection of boxes at competitive prices. Yeah. That's what I want to see and I think every dealer needs to step outside yeah. and look at their store from the customer's point of view. Are, is this the impression that you'd want to see when you walked into a retail yeah. store? So the, the vibe that I've gotten throughout this whole thing is you're continuing to think about the future. You're continuing to expand. You're continuing to build. You know, over the last year, the sports card market's cooled off, right? right? We saw it really be crazy hot in 2020, first part of 2021, but we've seen things cool off, and particularly this year. It seems like you're just as bullish as ever before on where things are going. Dude, there's so much to be excited about. To be honest with you, I haven't seen the cool off as far as traffic goes. The amount of new people entering the industry. Um, again, this is Thursday at one o'clock and you can see the traffic yeah. that we have here. And that is every day. So as far as the amount of users, I think it's still growing. Yeah. Um, I don't, sure, certain segments have cooled a little bit and that only makes sense because it was irrational to begin with. Um, but we've built this business to kind of be um, immune in many ways to the trends of the market mm -hmm. because of the way we built this and the way we service our customers. And it's still early days, mm -hmm. in my opinion. There's another wave coming that'll be bigger than the first wave because we'll be at stadiums. We'll have packs at 7-Eleven. We'll have gateways into this industry that we never had I before. Agree. We built I all agree. this, Jeff, without any of that. Yeah. And that's something we got to remember yep. because now all of a sudden live sports, all of a sudden Fanatics is going to put cards into places we've never dreamed of. We're going to have cards on, on college websites of their athletes. Yeah. Our tentacles of the yeah. hobby are going to go into so many different directions. It's already starting. Super it's excited. Exciting. And it we're exciting. involved in some big documentaries that are yeah. coming out. And so I think that's really going to be good for us. Hopefully the way we represent the hobby, it'll be good for everybody. Yeah. Exciting days ahead. Damn straight. All right, Rob, I now want to see perhaps the most exciting part of the entire operation, where those 42 million cards <laughs> live in your warehouse. Yeah, we have a warehouse that's a block from here, powers all of our e-commerce. I think you'll be impressed. We think it's one of the seven wonders of the hobby world. Seven wonders of the hobby. Let's go take a look. Let's go.